Walker, if you will. I, uh, I appreciate the committee to, uh, to come and, and be a part of this evening. I realize that hours late, but our scheduled meetings are on Thursdays, and you're doing a little overtime with the Senate meeting as well. And uh, I've asked uh, uh, Assistant Commissioner Brian Owens to, to prepare for at least some sort of educational portion of uh, Department of Corrections on a weekly basis. So whether we have legislation or not, you'll have an opportunity to at least get to know more and more about the department. I think really that's probably the only way you can effectively uh, do your jobs as an oversight committee also is to understand the committee, to understand the department's process. We'll also probably be listening to uh, similar similar uh, seminars from um, from properties commission as the times go on. And, and Brian has agreed to come back and, and get into more details of what we're going to do with, uh, with the prison enhancement program. And with that being said, uh, Brian, you may take the floor. What was the name again? Your, your name? John. John Howard. Okay, great, John. Go ahead and tell us what's going on and what you're expecting. If I, if I could stop you, I don't think I got a pass out uh, or either. Does anybody have a hand? Or did you send a handout? Kind of in a brown folder. Okay, they're in a brown folder. Okay, well, I don't have a brown folder. I guess that uh, makes a difference. One brown folder. Oh. Yeah, and, 
And I wanted just to, let me just mention to the committee that, uh, that this is a very informal committee meeting and I'll probably call you by your first names. I don't have the cameras on, so you guys can just, you guys can just relax and, and, uh, and, and ask any of the questions, even if you think they're silly, you can ask them because you're not going to be recorded on this one. That might make, uh, might make <laughs> well, if that be the case, I'll tell you what we'll do. We, we do have a quorum. We'll vote on that and determine whether <laughs> we should, should turn this cameras on. Uh, generally, we would, but since we're not going to take action, and most likely in the, in the future meetings we, we will have the cameras on, but I, I, I didn't do that at this time. Actually, when we first came in, there, we had so few members, I thought that uh, it might embarrass some if we actually turned the cameras on. So, <laughs> But we did, we did grow up. But, um, if, I guess I got the chart in front of me. And, and do you have the board rules in there also, what you passed by the board? Do oh, you happen to have those with you? Uh, boy, am I, man, let's turn the cameras on. <laughs> Go, go ahead then and, and pick up from that at that point and tell us where you're at and, and, and what you're anticipating. We can get those Good. Is his mic on this page? I, I, I just turned it on. It is. Okay. May have to get a little closer to it. Let's stop and talk about that a little bit, if you don't mind. Where, where's the department at in, in trying to determine the pie chart as to how much deductions are going to be kept by the state uh, or how much is going to actually be kept by the inmate? Let me ask you, I've, I've saw those, I've, I think every committee member has seen those models as well, but how close are we getting to trying, uh, making a proposal as to what we're going to do as far as our percentages? I, I think we, we can do it any day now. Okay. Just uh, using those parameters. Okay, just a second. Uh. Yes, sir. Uh, the chairman asked the, one of the questions I had, and thank you, but on the previous page, have you started any meetings yet with any of your partners? You have, who have you been meeting with?
Just one further question, sure. Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping I, I'm a supporter of the program, very much so. I, I see a lot of good in it. And I think I, I've got an old saying that understanding prevents misunderstanding. I would suggest that you carry labor along in these meetings. You just keep them informed because I think it would be a lot easier on the back end because many of the questions we had raised were raised by labor and their concerns in displacing the workers. And I think that periodically if you met with them, we'll find it to be a lot smoother transition and everybody's on the same sheet of music. Just a suggestion. I know it does, and what, what I'm suggesting, uh, Mr. Howard, and I think you're moving along good, and I'm glad to see someone with your background involved in it, but what I'm saying is it would be so much easier to be meeting with them now than to say, the program's ready and here's what we've got, and we've invited. Okay. Representative Dean, I think, has a question as well. Give me an idea of um, what amount of money the inmate might have after we went down this list and talked about the different kind of deductible. The, the, as I said earlier, the, the victim compensation, particular victim restitution, those are arranged from a 5% minimum. Mm -hmm. Basically, you've got to take that up to 20 as a max. Uh, uh, then you look at the room and board, and that's, a, that's something we'll just need to establish. But, mm -hmm. uh, the child support gets into So it's 20% left. So 20% cannot be deducted. Okay. And then you got a mandatory, that's even taken under consideration mandatory savings. I think it's mandatory savings, but the mandatory savings that as we're, we're trying to develop this will become an issue because if you get into the uh, victim compensation or the right. court order uh, situation and the child support, the mandatory savings may not be available. Right. But under no, circum under no circumstance can you go over 80%. No, and and I was, when I was coming in, you said that this program is volunteer. Yes, sir. Do it defeats our purpose by making it volunteer? No, sir. It's, uh, I think it would defeat the purpose of the program itself if it wasn't. <laughs> I just, just think that's part of the program, that forcing people into a, a labor program itself. I think there'll be plenty of people that are very anxious to get into this program. I don't see that as a, okay. a problem with that program. Okay. okay, I think we have another question, uh, Representative Buck Buckner. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, help me. You said 80%. That's for all of these deductions from the applicable taxes all the way down to the mandatory savings. Is that correct? Yes, the 80% of what? 80%. For, and, and within the 80%, it can be divided however you want to. Right. So what's well, the 20, that other 20 go for? The 20% is just, it, it would go into the MH account. So, so the mandatory the savings in his account? I'm confused. It will hit. It will hit his account. I, I think what we're going to be looking at by the time we sort everything out here, the uh, the deduction is going to be about sixty percent of the remainder will be going into the account unless we run into a child support issue. You know, I think that probably what would be helpful. Uh, obviously, you haven't got it entirely ironed out. The the committee is is very interested in how you're going to break those dollars down. What I would suggest that department do is why don't you give us a few scenarios? Why don't you go back and look at this and you come up with a few scenarios as to what the department thinks is, is would be a, a good benefit for, for our Department of Corrections so that the committee can sort of, sort of mull over those and see what we think and maybe we can get our heads together on that as well, if you don't mind. Under this mandatory savings, um, 
if you have any, would it go into some kind of account where they get interest on that money and stuff like that? Uh, you haven't we haven't thought about that yet. So, so who gonna hold the inmates' money and how do the inmate? Well, that money is just gonna be sitting in an account. Uh, okay. Just just for clarification, mm-hmm. obviously the dollars which go into the inmate savings account, I would assume that's an interest bearing account, wouldn't that's it? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what we wondered. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure on that point, Mr. Chairman. Okay. okay. And you and you looking at just the long term yes, inmates, but I mean I guess the, the question I would say is, for instance, somebody who got ten years, ten years, if he kept fifty two percent of what he made, he had on a job for ten years, as God, we need to be looking at how he can put that money, some kind of saving, and get some kind of interest on. Because one of the real problem on our residual rate and everything is is. People going into prison, coming out with no nothing to live off of, and getting right back into trouble. Yeah, well, I appreciate. Well, pro- pro- yeah, probably what you might want to take a look at on that the the savings portion is is you may you may develop some sort of a fund for that portion that actually that actually creates shares where there's there's X number of dollars in interest that's going to be paid on X number of shares. I don't know. There's a lot of lot to be worked out on that, but I think it's probably unjustified. If it belongs to the inmate, it's their savings account, they probably ought to be able to earn an interest on that. We also, we also have a question from Representative Reese. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can I, I think the microphone we delved there? a little into this last week when, when we discussed the commissaries uh, and the possible advent of the PI program in which inmates would have more money to spend. So I would be anxious to learn about what um, um, parameters the inmate might be able to spend that other 20%. Uh, I I think those persons employed in this program uh, would need a little more incentive um, that would allow them to spend a little more money than what they're currently spending on potato chips and personal items. And I'm interested in the savings, too. I think that ought to be some way a savings uh, for them, not just uh, where they can put their money and draw out what they have in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In addressing that, we, we have a limitation on what is uh, on how much an inmate can spend anyway in the commissary. And I think yeah. that would be restricted to that yeah. particular point. But We're aware of that. that. We're aware of that. I'm going to look into that. Yeah, this, this, um, I think Representative Green has a question as well. Uh, yeah, I know this, uh, all of this is in the, the making here. What will be the responsibility of the company coming in and helping? Um, there will certainly will be an increase in the amount of paperwork of keeping up with the accounts and everything. 
will it fall on the Department of Corrections or will it fall within the purview of the of the company? It's according to the program we get into and, and I'm answering that case where we have models that are set up for, for this. An employer model would actually do all the taxes and they take all the deductions at that point, except for the one you're talking about as far as once it gets into uh, the child support and those particular areas. So you would actually get a check in and they've already taken those. They wouldn't models. take out for that? Would, um, would you charge the company an administrative fee, though, and in, in, as part of your fees to, to recoup some of the added costs to the Department of Corrections? Uh, I haven't put anything together for charging them an administrative fee at this point. Maybe something you want to look at as far as, uh, as um, because you may get into a situation where it would be uh, kind of time consuming and costly to the, to the state, though. I think we have another question from Representative Williams. The, the, I heard you with the amount of people with the long-term sentences. Of course, this is designed for, and the, uh, I'm, I'm a little concerned, and I, I know that we have some federal guidelines we have to work with because I know that there's great interest in, in certainly for the victims, is great interest for the bed, but both of those are not the primary reasons for high recidivism. Twenty-five dollars in a bus ticket is where the problem lies. So I'm certainly glad to hear you using the 52 percent because it makes good politics to pay the victim and to pay for the bed, but it does not reduce recidivism. What he's got in his pocket to pay rent, get a piece of a car and do some things with is what determines if he stays out or not. Now, we'll make great hay paying victims, and we should. I want to see us do it. But it will not keep people out of prison. $25 is what sends them back. They broke before they get on the bus because somebody is a hustling candy at the bus door. Mm -hmm. Looks like that's all the questions on the funding issue, which you obviously there's a lot of interest there. And uh, I apologize that we've sort of st stopped your presentation at that point, but that's something that we want to hear from you on if you'll continue.
I think, we, I think we have some questions also in this area. Representative Green. Recently I returned from China and I saw a lot of the workers in the that were doing American products there. Thirty nine dollars a week. Are we are the people that are coming to you looking at the type of labor there as sort of the offshore labor pool? I've had one that uh, came with that in mind. Uh, he talked the bailing wage forty two cents an hour. Mm. What, what kind of interest do you have in the program right now from the private sector? Are you getting a lot of calls on this, or is there much interest there at this point? Uh, or does the state even know we've got this going on? Representative Reese. You know, I never understood the rationale for making this statement uh, that the PIE program might help keep more jobs here in the United States because we're very determined to treat these inmates fairly, um, those that, that do volunteer for the PIE program, and uh, not only the minimum wage but the prevailing wage wage in that area. And um, I do hope you work closely with the Department of Labor uh, to ensure that um, they are treated fairly and also to make sure they're not displacing other workers. But uh, I'm, losing, uh, I'm losing some of my industries to other countries too and um, knowing that the reason they're going is because of that 25 cents a day to 47 cents a day. and. Um, this statement always bothered me. John, how, how, are, how are you aligning a prison enhancement program with the department? Is it going to fall under correctional industries, or are you setting aside some subgroup, or where is it actually going to fit? So, so you're you're standalone. You're not actually. Who are you answering to? You're, okay. Yes. Please explain. Who's, who is, is, the, is the terminology director or supervisor of OTD? Arnold Smith. Arnold Smith. Okay. Continue, please. Is, is there any thought that um, correctional industries 
in a sense, will hire inmates to do certain work? I think some states have looked at that. I don't know. I'm, I'm a little rusty with it, but is there any thought along that line? I guess it's to make a manufactured product is what most have done and then sold the products and then return some return to come back. The direction I was headed with it is that more that if I have uh, 10 people working in uh, this particular section that does something, if I need three to do the prison ministry enhancement program work, they will be assigned to do that and will be paid accordingly. I mean, you do run into some problems with it, but that's something that other states are doing. Uh, Representative Green. Mr. Chairman, that brings up another question. Uh, if, of course, we're going to have to provide security uh, and all this uh, during this time, is are we going to do like we do to our counties and cities that we they uh, actually pay a fee for the uh, for the guard to come and to work? within the facility there. I'm going to set up an arrangement where the security of that particular institution is at the level that I would require, whatever level I would require as far as increased security, that I would charge that in the process of what we were setting up the contract. That that would be covered as, as part of it. I see no other questions on that subject. Do you want to continue on? You, uh, you're, you're saying that you think that we'll have our, our waiver in March, or we should have our certification approved in March. What kind of goals do you have as far as participation in the number of inmates that will be employed under PI, say, over the next five years? Have you got to that point yet? That's interesting. How are you doing that? The hurdles with labor and, and paying and prevailing wage, with the type of request you've got at this point, uh, what are you seeing there? What kind of obstacles are you running into as far as George is concerned? The, 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 yeah, and, and making sure that we're not going to displace, uh, obviously, the free world. Got some more questions, I think, on that area. Representative Green. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Howard, um, you stated a while ago you were trying to build a budget. Uh, do you have a budget that's going to be in 07 there? Okay. Uh, and on that line, uh, are you anticipating state dollars? You don't think the program will pay for itself? So the budget you're thinking, you're 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 actually preparing a budget that'll actually be within itself. And you're not actually planning on asking the state for any dollars. Good, Representative Williams. That's part of what I wanted to ask too, but um, I can't overemphasize the um, the importance. And and maybe when you come back with the report the chairman has requested, that you'll be able to talk to us more in depth with your plans for the partnership and your meetings with labor and assurances that there will not be a displacement and how we're going to establish the prevailing wage of an area. Just just to clarify some areas I think we're all anxiously waiting to hear about. 
in, in, in your negotiations with businesses, I assume that you're holding most of that close, or at what point will all this become record so everyone to know who you're talking to? I've heard some talk on, uh, obviously, as you know, the Senate as well as the House have been looking at the comma series. There have been some talk about maybe the possibility of having a pie program for uh, inmates who actually would run the comma series. Could, could that work? Or have you even looked at that? Explain that. You're talking about the state employees, are you? I'm talking about state employees are running on commissary. Right. The only way that particular situation would work is if Right. But you'd still have to have a, 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 a private supervisor over the inmates in that, in that commissary anyway. We would have to have that to come about before. So it doesn't sound like it probably would be a, a fit. Any other questions? We, we really appreciate you taking the time to brief us. Let me, let me do this. There's a number of people out here, obviously some interest in the audience. Uh, do you guys have got questions? Any, you, you, go ahead. Identify yourself, if you will. Hi, I'm Sarah Tosh. I'm with the Southern Tennessee Human Rights, and I also work with a group called Parents for Prisoners. Um, people who are related to me are Jeff Hoffman, Jeff Hoffman, Jeff Other questions from the – go ahead, identify yourself, please. Go ahead, please, address that. Thank you for that comment, sir. Um, we will invite your participation. You want to participate, of course, Sarah, with the Southern Center. There were some other organizations, too, where we talked last year. Up to this point, it's been primarily oil and paper plate legislation. Sure. It had to do with the federal system. There really are no decision points at this point until we get that certificate from the federal system. Understood. We will invite any organized group at that point once we get the oil and plate. We've got the legislation passed. We've got the application to the feds. Once the feds get it back, And Tess, what I might mention, just, just sort of to help you along the way where we're at, uh, the truth be known, 
uh, this is the first opportunity this committee has even had a chance to find out where we're at and what has occurred. So you're actually on the cutting edge. You're you're right here with the legislature. You're getting the same information that uh, uh, that any is. And I think what we're going to require is more and more information to be coming forth. Right, and that's the purpose of this because we're about to be there, and, and and we want all to get there at the same time. I think Representative Williams has has a question. I heard what uh, Tasso Tasso made reference to. And before you came in, I think I kind of raised that. Well, I did raise it directly. But I think that uh, it just kind of bears out what I said. And the state, the promises, well, the statements were made by Commissioner Donald. And, uh, and, and one of the things is, even with you, like I said, we're glad to see your board. But it would have been nice to drop them a memo and let them know that you're on board and what your job is. They, they, they certainly, but the chairman certainly stated it properly as this is the first time we've gotten to know so. And so believe me, you, you're on the cutting edge because I've learned today. <laughs> Thank you, Representative Williams. Is there others from the audience that would like to make a comment or uh, ask a question? Any, any, any more members of the committee? Okay, good presentation. Do you, um, do, do you have an idea of what you're going to brief us on next week? Have you got to that point yet? Yes, sir. Uh, we'd like to bring uh, our food and farm supervisor in. That'd be great. Do, do if you'll do that, and if you'll be prepared to do something a little bit different. This, even though the committee doesn't make budgetary um, amendments, it'd be interesting to understand the food and service budget. If you if you could sort of prepare to do that, give us the whole ins and outs in food and service. And I do that for a point. I'm hearing rumors of such a privatization for food and service, and I'd like to see the justification for that if that occurs. I'm just hearing rumors out in the in the street, not not from the department. Just there's a lot of people I think would love to sort of get the contract if they could, and I'd like to see where we're at on that. Yeah, and I appreciate that, and, and we'll have a number of others. What I'd like to feel also at some point in time is to start preparing correctional industries to come in because the, the committee needs to know the ins and outs of it as to how that works, and that's another interesting area for budgetary since it's a it's a trust and not necessary. It does, the funds doesn't necessarily go back into the uh, into the general fund, so we'd like to see how that operation works as well. If you start looking into that, is is there a request from the committee? Things would you like this uh, the, the department to prepare for over the next few weeks to bring presentation? Is there is there anything that is burning in your mind at this point in time you've wondered about but you just haven't heard? Well, 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 I'm sure there will be, and uh, actually uh, one is mentioned of certain prisons. They want to try to compare some of the local prisons of the same type of security, one for the other, to see what type of systems are actually out there. Let me mention this in closing, uh, and I'm sure you, you probably remember that we've been invited out to dinner tonight, and if you, uh, if you didn't know that, by the way, the audience, you're not included in this. This is a... <laughs> This is this is not a communion, I'm afraid. This is for a private dinner, I think. That CCA, I believe it is, has invited the committee out to, to dinner tonight, and you, you should make preparations. Do that if you wish. And um, also, I want to mention this as well, that uh, if you need a committee day for tomorrow, since we will be working uh, in this dinner tonight, uh, feel free to contact Ginger and ask for that as well. Okay? Meeting adjourned.